Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sean from RideSharing101.com. And today I, I want to talk to you about the new soft generation. But before I get into that on the daily vlog, just a reminder, please check out the website RideSharing101.com. I have the daily vlog there. I have the YouTube channel with lots of videos with how to make more money. I have the short stories about the more interesting passengers I've picked up. In addition, there's links to the Facebook page so you can ask other rideshare drivers questions and, and, and get advice instead of just taking my word for it. And oh yeah, website, ebook and t-shirts for sale as well. Um, today I want to talk to you about the soft generation and maybe I shouldn't even use the air quotes, but um, I know it's easy for a lot of people to kind of cap on the millennials, but this the younger generation really unfortunately they are soft they are entitled and this is evident in a couple of different ways the other day i'm driving and i am there's a car turning left okay so it's pulled out into the intersection like you're supposed to do it's waiting for traffic to clear so it can make the left turn so i so the light turns yellow and i pass this car on the right and I'm going slow. And just as I'm going, this millennial guy starts walking. And he gets about a quarter of the way across. And he stops. And he goes like this. And he's got this expression on his face that looks like he's sucking on a lemon and taking a dump in his pants at the same time. And he's like, like this. And I go, what about me? And he's like, and then... He finally looks at the light, but by this time, the light has changed and it's now green because I've stopped in the middle of the intersection because I'm worried about hitting his worthless butt. So, you know, he just looks at me, doesn't say anything, of course, because, ooh, wouldn't want to do that. But he starts staring at my license plate number like, you know, he's going to do something. Fine, big whoop, you know. I'd rather he just said something so I can get out of the car and we'll like settle it. But of course, soft boy isn't going to do anything like that. Now, I, I bring this up because I pick up a lot of people that work in the tech industry. And I got this woman who is in charge of HR for a major tech company. And I've just realized I'm looking at my picture in my head it's very small so let's let's adjust this you now see my handprint Ooh, all right that's a little better um hey we do it in one take here um so she works for this major tech company doing hr and she told me three three great stories that kind of illustrate what i mean by the soft generation the first is she works at a tech company that have, they have a lunchroom and the lunchroom, you get all kinds of different great food, uh, prep so you don't have to leave the office and, and go out into the, to the world and lose time and everything's right there so you can eat, go back to your desk, whatever, do what you want. She had somebody that complained because even though they serve 10 kinds of beer, this person was not pleased with the selection. And let me just stop you there. I've worked in corporate America. I've worked for Wells Fargo Bank before. There are a lot of companies where you cannot drink on the job at all. In fact, if you drink, that's grounds for dismissal. But at this job, it's okay. And that's how they run the business. So, you know, fine, whatever. Dude was complaining that although there were 10 kinds of beer that they didn't have his favorite. So he asked uh, if they would remedy that situation. And the HR person, you know, kindly informed him that, you know, 10 beers was more than an adequate amount of choice. Should they run out, she would consider his request. Number two. Employee leaves laptop out in a common area for three hours. 
HR person keeps an eye on the on the computer. After three hours, picks it up, stashes it in her desk. Later on, said employee is like, oh, someone stole my computer. And the HR person is like, are you, are you sure? Yeah, someone took it. And the HR person was like, well, where'd you leave it? Oh, it, it was in my desk area. Oh, okay. So I don't know if this person had lost a computer before, but evidently other people in the company have lost computers and the company replaces them. And so after some time, the HR person said, hey, you know, um, you know, no, you, your computer didn't get stolen. I've got it because you left it in the hallway. You know, you didn't leave it at your cubicle. You, you, you basically fibbed. And, you know, if this happens again, we're not going to replace it. Or if we do, we're going to charge you for it. Now, get this. The response was, you can't do that. And the HR person's like, yeah, it's company property. Yes, we can. If you lose it, you're going to have to pay for it. No, you, you can't do that. Right? <laughs> Never mind that a lot of companies, you lose company property, you just get fired. But hey. You can't do that. Ooh. Third great example. Dude with some experience accepts a job as a engineer or programmer or whatever you want to call it. Making, you know, good six figure salary. And somehow dude thinks it's the 1980s because he demands that a limo pick him up from the airport when he arrives. And he was informed that, no, that that wasn't going to happen. So said dude just says, well, forget it then. I, I'm not going to take the job. So soft boy couldn't get a limo from the airport because evidently, I guess that's how he measures his worth. I don't know. Maybe he's compensating for something because he wants a big stretch limo. Don't know. I just think it's really funny that, you know, somehow this is the big 80s. He probably wasn't even alive then. And he's demanding a limo. And the rest of the staff was in shock. They told the HR person, you, you should you should have just given him the limo. And she's like, what are you talking about? If he's like that before he gets the job, what do you think he's going to be like afterwards? And there's just no clue with the, the staff and, and, and the younger generation. They, they just think everything should be given to them because they're special. As other people have said, you know, they get, uh, they've gotten eighth place trophies all their life. So they, they think they're something and they are, they're soft. A lot of people are saying that there's a market correction coming because the economy has been so great for the last nine, 10, 11 years. So when these people that have been out of college and have only known good times that are in their early thirties that are paying $4,000 for a studio apartment, in San Francisco, when they lose their job, when they can't get another job, or if they do, it'll be for half salary and they have to get roommates and they all of a sudden have forty, fifty thousand $50,000 in credit card debt that they can't pay back, all of a sudden things get crazy. Maybe they have to move back with mom and dad, go back to Michigan or wherever they're from, get a job at a bank or get a job at, you know, Starbucks as a barista and they realize, wow, I really need to live off tips. Tips are going to make the difference. I should have tipped all those people all those years um, when I was getting my, my Starbucks decaf, no foam vanilla latte from uh, the local coffee shop. So I, I think there's a rude awakening coming and the Germans have a term, I want to call it like Schaffenfreuden and I, I could have that wrong and I'm too lazy to look it up. I'm sorry. If I was into editing, I'd edit it and, and tell you. But basically the word is, it basically means 
taking pleasure from other people's misery. And I certainly don't think that I'm better than anybody else. I, I really don't. I've just had to work hard. I've had a job when I was 16. I was a busboy when I was in high school. And I know what, what it's like to work hard and I appreciate hard work. That doesn't mean that other people who haven't worked as hard doesn't mean they're worse than I am, doesn't mean they're better. I think we're, we're all equal. I just think that there is a certain level of absence, of non-thought going on that it's like that commercial where the kids are, the kid is talking to his dad and he's trying to change a tire and he doesn't know how to change a tire and he's got some hook in his hand and he's asking his buddy, you know, like, uh, is this a lug wrench? He, he, he doesn't know what it does. He doesn't know how to change a tire, which is, which is pretty basic. And I, I think that's way, that's the way that society is going. We've got a lot of people that think they're smart and might be book smart, but just really can't do anything and can't do anything else and look down upon those people who do know how to do it, thinking that they're just a little too pedestrian, you know, all the electricians and plumbers, that's, that's fine. But, you know, I'm in tech, you know, I eat avocado on toast for breakfast, so I'm somebody. Anyway, that's my thought of the day. I thought it was very hilarious listening to uh, an HR person uh, tell some, some stories. Um, of course, no names uh, were given. But I think that uh, the younger generation is going to have some growing up to do. And uh, I frankly welcome it. So that's my thought of the day. Guys, take care and drive safely.